Welcome in to the makeup store. How can I help you? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We have a ton of options to choose from, as you can see from the spread. If you're a total newbie to the kind of lipstick game, uh, I'll just walk you through from kind of least threatening to most. And if anything, really sticks out to you, you can let me know. Otherwise, uh, at the end, you can just pick anything that you liked or nothing at all. It's up to you. Okay. <laughs> Great. So, we'll actually start with some lip glosses because I think that's the easiest for people who aren't used to wearing anything on their lips. And if they rub away, because they won't leave behind a stain. Yeah, so to start, I have these two from CoverGirl, and this is a double platinum, and this is a golden girl. And these are liquid glitter top coats. So you can wear them on their own for like a really high shine, or you could put a lipstick on and then use these to really like intensify glossiness. I will just swatch these. Actually, this little silver one has never been opened. It's a new tester, so I'll go ahead and open that. Great. And I'll swatch them on the back of my hand for you. Yeah, these are all testers, but we have brand new ones in the aisles if you want to this is just for us to show people and for them to try out for themselves if they want to get like their own applicator. I don't know, this golden girl wants me a bit stubborn. The tester honestly might be getting a little old. We have to replace them every so often because like anything, they're opened a lot, which means they can get very dried out. The golden one. Is really, really not trying to work with me. There we go. Got some. Definitely need to change this one out for a fresh one, though. Okay. So, the first one here is Golden Girl, and the second one is Double Platinum. You can see they're both really high shine, beautiful. And then, I have two other, like, pretty popular ones here. You can see they're both kind of... This one's more pinkish, and this one's more gold, but they're both pretty warm. So this first one is the Wet n Wild Mega Slicks in Bronze Berry. Put that there, right beside it. So you can see it definitely has a pink undertone. And then the, this one is Seductive Honey from Estee Lauder. Yeah, we keep a lot of different price ranges here because, you know, everyone's budget is different. Yeah. So these two. As you can see here, this is the wet and wild one very pink and this Estee Lauder one is very subtle like a very subtle golden glow but both really pretty depending on what you're looking for yeah okay I'll go ahead and swatches so we can continue on the next set. So again, just get a good look at those again. Very sticky. Great. And now I think we'll move on to the more neutral, a little pinkish, rosish kind of family. This is the Elf Sheer Slick 
in Golden Pear. These are really pretty, but they are not full coverage, and so they wear better. If you're not going to be touching up your lipstick throughout the day, it's kind of better to go with something a little lighter that's going to wear more evenly. If you wear like a bold matte lipstick as like the center rubs off or the outer edges, it's very noticeable and you'll need to do touch up. there. Again, this is a golden pear. Very pretty, very shiny and comfortable formula. Next, I have this NYX one. This is the NYX Shine Loud in Life Goals and it's a double-ended stick. So on this end we have the color and then on this end the gloss that kind of locks it in. These are definitely very, very shiny, but actually quite long wear. The gloss truly does lock this color in. This one's a much more pink shade overall. So I'll go ahead and put the gloss on because that's what you're supposed to do when you wear it. It's very reflective. And again, this is in the shade Life Goals. So you can see that like mega, mega shine. And then another really nice shade is this Estee Lauder shade in Incensed. And this is from their sculpting line. It's a nice rosy color, very pink, but very wearable. So again, all of these shades, more pops of color, but definitely still very wearable. Next, we'll move on to the more intense kind of shades like I'm wearing. Nude, but deeper, warmer. And as you can see, that next one is hanging on against my makeup wipe. Really having to get at it. And that only set for like a minute. Imagine if you let it set and stain. Like it really does wear very, very well. And there's a ton of shades from that line. Just keep that in mind. So next, like I said, we're actually just gonna go to the one that I'm wearing, which is the L'Oreal Color Riche and Cinnamon Toast. So you can see it on my lips, but I am gonna go ahead and swatch it for you too because your underlying lip color, depending on how pigmented they are, can change the tone of the lipstick. So I'll just go ahead and pop that on the back of my hand. So that's there. Really pretty, and as you can see, it's, it's very full coverage. It's not matte by any means. Soft, wearable. It is going to fade throughout the day. It's not going to last long, so you definitely want to pop something like this into your bag to take with you if you want to maintain your color throughout the day. So again, that's Cinnamon Toast from L'Oreal. I have two. The next two shades are very similar, but they're from different brands. So this first one is Mochalicious from Wet n Wild. It's this color. This one is more of a matte. You can see there's not a lot of shine. It is brown, but almost more of a purpley color. It has a kind of cooler undertone. So again, that's Mochalicious. And then this is Blushing Brown from e.l.f. Cosmetics. As you can see, this one again is brown, but less purple, more true brown. Still cool, but not as much berry. These are all three really good kind of neutral options, and depending on 
person specific undertone you can kind of choose from there or maybe the vibe you're going for all three very 90s kind of grunge looks though good for that aesthetic and also all three can be put on really lightly or blotted for like a less deep effect yeah Off. In the next colors we're going to jump into are some reds, which are very bold and exciting. Let's take one last look at those. Take these off. Yeah, with a matte lipstick, you're definitely going to get a lot more wear time without having to touch up. But on the flip side of that, they can be a little drying they usually dry down quite intensely in order to stay on for so long so it's really it's just preference if you're gonna do the touch-ups or if you know you're not gonna it's up to you yeah and truly every matte lipstick is not created equally it can be very dry and still fade so you just kind of have to test out what works for you everyone's different to start out we're gonna do this wet and wild liquid catsuit in Flame of the Game. So this is red, but it's more of a kind of a brick red, like an orangish undertone. Yeah, and with um, these liquid ones, they'll look glossy until this one's really nice and honestly pretty universal, I think. Some of the really blue pigmented reds can be a little harder to wear, but I think a nice like orange undertone is pretty universal. And it looks especially good on like really deep skin tones. The next one I have to show you is from CoverGirl and this is the Melting Pout Matte in the shade Red Wedding. Which is triggering for some people. If you know, you know. I put that on. And you can see what I mean right here about a more blue based red. You can see that definitely has a completely different undertone, but still really beautiful. And you can wear both. Yeah, you can wear. If you have the right skin tone, you can wear whatever you want. And honestly, if you just don't care what anyone thinks, you can wear whatever you want. I love both of these shades, and I have been known to rock like every shade of red, whether it looks good on me or not. <laughs> yes, this one is another Melting Pout Matte, but this one is an All Nighter, and you can see it's a little bit darker. More of like a vampy red, I would say. So, go ahead and put that one right there. You can definitely see there's more of a purple undertone. Very vampy, again, that kind of goth look. So, when you put that purple red next to the middle one, it almost kind of makes this look more like a true red. And then you have like a berry red. And then lastly, I'm going to show you this Milani shade in Best Red because they do make mattes in tube form red as well that are really good. And this again is a berry. It's kind of between these two, honestly. This one's a little berry, a little blue. This one's like just a little bit more blue. And then this one has a lot of blue veering almost towards purple. Yeah, very, very pretty. I think I'm still partial to the orange red the most though, honestly. I think I just find that it's really flattering on me. Some of the other ones aren't as much, but it's all preference. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes you just don't know until you try it. 
So a good idea a lot of times can be to either get a lot of cheaper lipsticks to just try out different shades and see what you're comfortable with, what suits you the most before you invest into some of the more expensive brands or a lot of higher end brands will make like collections of miniature lipsticks so you can try them out, a bunch of different shades and see what you like, what you don't like. They're obviously a little bit pricier than like a drugstore alternative, but again, you are getting several to choose from in that collection. And again, several brands offer those. You would just, mm -hmm. we don't tend to carry them as much in stores, but there's usually always deals online, especially around the holidays. Actually, some brands even offer virtual try-ons, so that could be another option, too, if you really just don't want to waste money on something you're unsure about. Yeah. Alright, and our last two lipsticks are more of the purple, true berry tones. This one, I guess, another melting mouth, melting mouth, melting pout matte, and this is in the shade Backtop. Very dark. Again, same thing as before. Just to get outside of my swatch line here. Get that cleaned up. So again, very purple, very dark, very vampy, gothy, but very pretty. And you can see too that it's a little uneven sometimes with these really dark shades. You have to be careful how you apply them so they don't build up all in one area. Or you can do a couple of light layers to get the full opacity that you're looking for. And last but not least is this Pure Color Envy from Estee Lauder in Insolent Plum, which is a cool name. As you can see, very, very, very. here. This one has a bit more shine because this one is again a matte and then this one is a little bit lighter, a little bit pinker. You can see those true berry tones coming through versus a more like purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these can be a bit trickier to balance in terms of your makeup look or in terms of it keeping it very casual. But it all comes down to what you're comfortable with and what you think suits you. And as I said before, you always have the option of applying very light layers and also blotting to tone down some of that boldness. Yeah. Okay, so do you have any selections or would you like to take a minute and kind of look around? There's obviously a ton more shades that I didn't show you. Absolutely. Yeah, take your time. Uh, browse and then come back to me when you're ready if you have any selections. If not, it was so nice to meet you and please do let me know if I can help you again in the future. Okay, have a great night.